like clockwork, here I am again. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Wednesday, May 8th, which means I need to remind you of my live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co-host Taylor, we're on for about an hour and a half, taking requests from investors like you. You got a penny stock you want us to look at? You got a hot penny stock you want to share? <laughs> Bring it on in. Drop it in the comment box. I'll go over the information. Taylor will go over the charts and we'll give you two opinions, whatever that's worth to you. In all fairness, though, I have to tell you, if you drop the ticker during the show, chances are I will never get to it. See, I put up an announcement that I'm going to do this earlier in the day, a placeholder for the video, and the comment box is there from the get-go, and people start dropping their tickers then. So by the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I've already got 7 or 8 stocks that I've got to look at, and that's about all we can look at in an hour and a half. So I apologize that I don't get to your tickers during the show. So if you really want your ticker looked at, I post this around lunchtime, and wherever you follow me, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, I post it there. So jump in when you see it, get your ticker in there. Most likely, it's going to be one of the first in the queue we cover, and that's going to give me more time to look at it as well. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursdays, every Thursday. So what we like to do on this show is focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks and you can find them on every market. And I'm always looking for a hot stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. And normally when I find a hot stock, it's when I'm looking at the charts. Because first off, I'm there watching my trade, watching the chart. So while I'm there, I pull up a scan and just start searching through the charts for a chart that has heat. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a hot piece of information. If you can match a hot piece of information to a hot chart, you got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And that's where we got this stock today. This is ticker SMCE, SMC Entertainment. Now, full disclosure, I do own this stock. I've owned it, God, for a long time. And it's just a small holdings, but I am declaring that. And that really has nothing to do with why I'm showing it to you. This company had news come out today. It was big news, and we're going to look at it. And the stock was moving on the charts. Well, I came back around noon. I was looking for a stock that I was going to share for you. That's about the time I quit trading and start going to work. Well, I looked at this stock again. It was around noon, 1230, and it was up about 20%. And it was like, there you go. Hot news, climbing stock, really cheap. I think this is the one I'm going to share. <laughs> I went and did all my due diligence, set it all up, came back, looked at the chart, and it's like, what? I looked at it, it was at 86%. I see it's come down to 78%. So yeah, she was a hot stock today, but things are just getting going for this company. She isn't really doing much. I would call her pre-revenue. I mean, she made like $7,000 last year, and I'm not quite sure what she did to make that money. I don't see that they're really doing anything, but it doesn't say that they're a shell company or a shell risk. But I don't see any business. But they have been working towards something now for about a year. They have been working towards an AI product that they are just about ready to launch. So now is the time to be looking at this. SMCE finished the day at a great buying price, 0012. She was up, oh, she dropped a little more. She's up 71% right now. She is on the pink tier, the bottom tier of the OTC. This is the riskiest tier because you don't get a lot of validated information, if any. Normally, the only validated information you get are these two green ticks a verified profile, and a verified transfer agent, which are important. We're glad to see those. Now, pinks can opt to become SEC reporting. Most pinks just give us disclosures for their financials. Disclosures aren't looked at by a CPA. They're not audited. These are just numbers that the management passes off to us, so they really don't have a whole heck of a lot of value. But if they opt to be a SEC reporting, they will move to 10Ks and 10Qs, 8Ks. Even though they're pink, then you start getting all that validated information. And this company is in the midst of doing that right now. So what is SMCE about? 
Well, this is a very generic description, but we'll read a couple sentences here. SMC is a versatile holdings company focused on acquisition and support of proven commercialized fintech companies, that is financial services and technology. Now, I've jumped over here to their website, hasn't got a lot of information. As I said, they don't seem to be doing anything right now, but they do give us enough information to put us on track of what I need to share with you. They tell us here that in a marketplace of rapid advancement of artificial intelligence, SMC identified multiple opportunities within the fintech universe to pursue for its shareholders. The company sees itself as a fintech disruptor, seeking businesses that are pioneering the digital world in investing using AI, specifically within the financial services domain. One such company, which they acquired back in 2023, is Finity. Taking a look at Finity to see what they're about. This is their website, and they seem to be a trading platform, a unique one for stocks, one I haven't seen before. They trade their stocks in blocks, a lot like an ETF. An ETF will have a lot of different stocks that they put into one basket that all have something in common, maybe the same sector, the same technology, something. They bring them all together and you can invest in that ETF and be a part of all those stocks. And overall, if those stocks are going up, you make gains. If overall they're all going down, you lose money. Well, it's the same concept here with their blocks. Finity blocks are essentially collections of stocks grouped around a theme, event, or based on influencer actions and traded as one. We select the best stocks based on trends and performance using both AI and human expertise and make them into blocks. We then manage the blocks for you, monitor and tweaking them continuously for best results. Now down here, we've got a few different blocks that they've got. Let's dive into one so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. This is the metaverse block. Now, the first thing you take notice of here is there are no OTC stocks. <laughs> I don't think there's any penny stocks. No, the metaverse stocks that they have chosen are the big boys. We got Google, JD.com, Alibaba, Meta, NVIDIA, AMD, Adobe, Apple, Microsoft. I mean, these are the giants on the market, right? Then you come down and they start giving you some information about the gains that they've been making pretty strong gains there, 708%. How often they tweak it. Every three months they come and look at it. Maybe a stock has to be pulled out or one has to be added. And then you get some stats down here, how it's been doing. Over the last 10 years, this portfolio has been doing pretty good. It was down here at $10,000 in 2015 and currently at $80,000. Yeah, doing real good. And then they give you other increments here showing their gains. Now, the one thing I could not find on this page was the price. I mean, that's the thing you want to know, right? Now, of course, I'm thinking to myself, not that I could afford it. I'm looking at these stocks saying, well, this is going to be real expensive. Whatever it is, it's going to be out of my ballpark. Well, I've come to the conclusion, not with facts, but just by going through what I've seen here, there isn't a price. You know, think of it like Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going for anywhere between sixty and seventy thousand dollars. Well, let's say you want Bitcoin, but you don't have sixty or seventy thousand dollars. Well, that's okay. You don't have to buy a whole coin. You can buy a fractional coin. Whatever you want to invest into Bitcoin is okay. And whatever Bitcoin does in percentage gains is what you're going to make on your investment. Well, I think that's the same thing here. You just invest what you want to invest and the percentage gains are either added or subtracted from your investment. Now what this is all about is AI. So I pulled up something here I wanted to share with you. They are using a lot of points of information. The more information AI can get, the better it's going to do. And they want to combine AI with trading. Now we've been talking about toner, ticker T-O-N-R, they have been producing a trading assistant called Maddie. And Maddie's been going out and doing other things. And we haven't heard much about her trading. 
They want to do the same thing, except it's not a trading assistant. It's a trading platform that AI is built into. And this is where they're getting their data from. They tell us they're capturing between 20 and 30,000 data points every day from different places. Some of the data we touch onto, some of it they're touching onto that we never would. And they are now touching on the data that we have to try to figure out and they've never been able to do. First off, they're working with the basic data, market data, real time and historical price data, trading volumes, bid and ask spreads and order book information economic indicators these are tough to figure in things like gdp inflation rates interest rates they're doing it for us news and sentiment analysis we're talking about news articles social media sentiment and other textual data sources to gauge market sentiment i have not known of any digital program that could do that for us ai is now being able to Fundamental data like the company's financials, earning reports, analysis recommendations, of course, of course, and then alternative data. You know, they say, for example, if we were looking at the financial sector, we may be considering the buy now, pay later tracking or credit card usage. So they're bringing in data from a lot of different places, culminating it all, and then using it for our best advantage so we know if this is a good stock to be investing in or not. Now we're going to get more information about this because they're building onto this concept. They acquired Finity back in June of 2023 and they've made more acquisitions building on this trading platform that we're going to cover. So let's take a look at that stock for now. Relative volume for the company. Oh my God, another explosion, folks. That is huge. Going from 1.2 million shares a day over the last 30 days, today she kicked butt, hitting over 180 million shares. That is something like 140 times her normal volume, 14,000% increase in her volume. A lot of attention is being paid to this company. That's why we're looking at it. Share structure for the company. All right, we've got a lot of shares in the outstanding share count, almost one and a half billion. The good news is that the insiders own about 900 million of them, just shy of a billion. We get the other half, just a little over a half a billion. So even though that's not a great float, it's kind of high. It's not as bad as it could be. And the insiders are in it for the ride right along with us. So if they do a reverse split, they lose more than we do. Market cap for the company, would you believe it's just about a million dollars? You know, a market cap is figured out by taking all these shares outstanding and multiplying it times the price. That's your market cap. So a billion and a half times that is about one million. Financials for SMCE. We have nothing annually for the last two years. What about quarterly? We have nothing quarterly. I thought they had some money on the books. Definitely pre-revenue then. Absolutely pre-revenue, not making anything. Check out the balance sheet. That's where I saw that $7,000. They got $7,000 in the bank. That's all they got. We've got to add, three. it's not seven. We've got to add three zeros to any of these numbers on any of these charts. So that is $7,000 in the bank. They've got $300,000 that they're waiting to be paid. So total, they've got $371,000 in assets. Liabilities is a lot more than that. God, about 10 times, 3.7 million, which means we are currently holding stockholder deficit in this company of 3.3 million. Now, as I said, to me, this looks like a shell company. If nothing else, it looks like pre-revenues and they need something to happen. And as soon as they start making revenues, as soon as they have a product to offer, things should take off. Now, that Finity product, it is one of their products, but they are making it better right now. And they tell us in the most recent financial that they are going to be selling this at an initial cost of $50,000 with a recurring monthly fee of $100,000 from anybody who implements this platform. That's how they're planning on making their money. And there are some royalties on the side as well. Let's take a look now at those disclosures. Oh, right. 
Now, is this the one that had all the Form 4s? No, it was the 10G. <laughs> I've been looking at a lot of stocks. So, we've got a couple of 8Ks here. These relate to the news. These are actually news presses. We're going to look at those. But I wanted you to take notice of this 1012G that was filed back here June of 2023. It was at this same time they had acquired Finity. And it was at this time they filed to upgrade to SEC reporting. And when you do that, that normally means you're going to uplist as well. There are very few pinks that are SEC reporting that are using 10Ks, 10Qs that don't uplist. So they did file for this all the way back in June. When you see an A behind any filing, it means it was amended. Then we see it was put in again here in September. Amended, 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 amended. When was this last one? That was March 18th. Now I point that out because it is mentioned in their uh, financial. The company anticipates signing a beta test contract after its Form 10 registration statement is effective. They are doing a beta test to get this product on the market. And they're going to do it once the 10 registration statement is approved, which means they will be SEC reporting, will have audited financials, a lot more information, and they're probably going to uplist. That is just a presumption. All right, so we've got a 10K here that just came out. You can dive into that if you want to do research on the company. You're going to get more info on that than anywhere else, I guarantee it. But we do have more info that we can get from the news. Now, I have gone back to that acquisition when they acquired Finity Global Equities. This was what we were just looking at. That was May 10th. And then it was on June 8th that they filed their Form 10 asking to be upgraded to SEC reporting. That's old news. But it's all happening right now, too, because they're still building on this project. We have two recent pieces of news here, one that came out April 19th and one that came out today. We're going to take a look at both of these. The first one, that is about the SEC reporting. I've already discussed that one with you. This one is about a deal they made with Plato Technologies. The company is pleased to announce a marketing agreement and a collaboration with Plato Technologies. Plato Technology specializes in AI content disruption and AI management systems. The collaboration will enable the company to market Plato's platform directly to the web and content development teams. The companies agreed on a revenue sharing agreement after deducting individual client acquisition costs. We are very excited to be engaged with Plato to further our development and building of our internal AI foundation. We believe we can successfully market their platform and in turn gain valuable access to its archived content. Content is key in assimilating market data. We want to utilize that content in our market-driven machine learning program for trading. The synergies are huge and provide us an accelerated platform to execute on our business plan. Now let's get a little more information about Plato. Plato is an AI-powered content and syndication network that curates the latest in data intelligence across today's most innovative market verticals. The platform is designed to provide an ultra-safe and secure environment to consume sector-specific real-time data intelligence across 45 market verticals and 35 languages. Plato's in-house syndication network currently syndicates content to over 1,900 publisher websites for deep, authentic connectivity to communities. That next piece of news came out today. The company tells us that they have made an agreement with Chain Trade LTD. They have actually signed the letter of intent. Chain Trade has developed an AI powered asset trading platform that allows users to trade any equity, ETF, commodity, and index with the support of a personalized AI powered trading assistant. SMC has agreed to acquire the platform and looks forward to completing the necessary due diligence to close this acquisition quickly as the platform is ready for commercial launch. Chain Trade is a joint venture between, here we go, 
Plato Data Intelligence, and Red Matter Capital and was built to revolutionize trading and investing by leveraging AI's predictive capabilities. We look forward to closing the acquisition of Chain Trade. Once completed, we will have a fully functional model to deploy. This acquisition will advance our infrastructure and technology tremendously. SMC can now shift from conception to application and full implementation of our software as a service vision. After closing, we plan on rebranding our AI component as FIN. F-Y-N-N-A-I. We look forward to introducing FIN as a new next generation learning and research AI designed to help you trade smarter. We will continue to update shareholders as this thing develops. I think it's a hot product. I think it's a good time to look at it considering that her, her volume is kicking up so hard right now. The chart is starting to take off and she is at a decent price. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we're visiting with an old friend of mine, Think or Swim, <laughs> and we're taking a look at ticker SMCE. This is SMC Entertainment. Got this opened up to a one day, one year chart. As you can see, over the last year, she has predominantly been underneath that 200 in a downtrend. She had a high back in September of 006. That was her 52 week high. She had a 52 week low in December of 0005. Now, as you can see, she has a habit of breaking through the 200. She just doesn't go anywhere when she does it. And that's exactly what happened after this low bubble. She again broke through the 200 and came right back down. Then she made another attempt, but this time she didn't get anywhere. Came back down and out came the news and she launched. We had a ton of volume come in today. The price took off from 0006 up to 0016. Take away all the zeros, that's going from 6 to 16. That is over 150% gains. And she only fell back to 0013. She is well over the 200 still. And all of our SMAs are on an uphill climb now. Every single one of them. And goodness gracious, look at our oscillators, folks. They are on fire. Every single one of them is literally launching to the moon right now. Let's take a look at our six-month, four-hour view. All right, what I see here are our highs are getting lower and lower, and then they're not. So we stopped that trend. <laughs> our lower highs has stopped. We have a new high on the board at 0016. This is starting to pull all of our SMAs up, folks. Our 50 and our 200 haul are turned up with the 200-day SMA. They're all climbing, the big boys. And our 20-day has just crossed over the 200-day the SMA. This is looking very strong. Osculators, whew, that's backing me up 100%. Look at this, folks. All of these osculators are pushing to the moon. That's what you want to see. Our RSI has had just a smidge of a pullback. She was on fire. Right now, she is sitting at 70. Coming down to that 20-day, one-hour view. Not a lot going on these last 20 days. She was pushing up to get on top of that 200, took a crouch, fell deep underneath the 200, underneath the 200 haul, and then launched with a big bang all the way up and then falling back down. Now, what I see here that concerns me is that price is way up here and our nine day SMA is way down there. The spread between each one of these SMAs and the price are all attached with rubber bands. If any one of these gets too far apart from the other, it will snap back. And if it gets a lot of pressure, it can snap back and pass and start to tumble. So we want to see a controlled fall here. The fact that she has stopped dead center in the middle of this bar is a good sign. I do like that. Our osculators, all of them are looking strong. RSI is not cooled off, it's just planed out. She's going sideways right now, waiting for something to happen. Way up there at 67. Let's come down to our five day, five minute. All right. So this is when I looked at right around this point. I had seen a few big bars. That's around 12, 12, 20. And we're up about 25%, uh, 20% here. Then she went up another 60% after I looked at it. 
I didn't know she was going to run like that. But now she's going sideways. And that isn't a bad thing, folks. People are buying in at this one price without pushing it down. Let me show you something. I'm going to grab my Fibonacci. The Fibonacci is a tool I like to use that shows me algorithmic supports and resistances. I normally poke the bottom of the surge and then the top. You can also do this for big drops. Just poke the top and poke the bottom. Now what I'm looking for first thing is the halfway point. Dead center of the run. That is a perfect average. The middle, dead center. When I have a run go strong, I expect when it stops running, it's going to fall. It's going to fall back 50% at least. I'm expecting that. And I don't want it to go below that. If it comes down to 50% and hangs around this line, chances are it's going to continue to grow up from that point. But if it comes underneath the 50, see how it landed on it right here? Landed perfectly. If it comes underneath the 50, it has a tendency to keep falling. The bottom half is red. That's negative. The top half is green. That's positive. Well, look where she fell. She got to her high and she fell here. We're nowhere near the 50% line. She is well in the green zone. Strong positive. She came to the 20. She stuck with it. She has not left the 20. The 20 hasn't left her. She didn't reject it. Here comes the 50. Normally, when I see a price going sideways, it's because they're waiting on the stronger SMAs to come up underneath and support them so that they can get a push off and start to climb again. She did not push off the 20. The 20 isn't a big SMA. Think of these as pieces of wood, right? You've got your balsa wood. That's a nine day SMA, super thin. You can break it without a problem. You got your 20 day, which is plywood. That's pretty thick. You got your uh, 50 day, which is, uh, you know, a plank. That's a big one inch plank. And then you got your 200 day, which is a two by four, really thick. So this did not want to jump off of the 20, has not jumped off of the nine, waiting for the 50, something stronger to get a push off of hard so it can get a good strong run. Optimistically, that's the way I see this. She could dip back down. I would expect her not to come down below the 50% mark since she created a strong support right there laying on it. So if she comes back down, I would think she'd hit the 50 day SMA first and bounce. If she passes it, I would watch for it to hit the 50% mark on our fib and bounce off of that. I'm pretty optimistic she's not going to fall. What do our oscillators say? Well, she is cooling off. She's been going sideways, dipping down just a little bit. And that's what you see on our oscillators. And believe it or not, our RSI is climbing. She's actually pushing up right now. So this is going to need some more research. There's not a lot to read, but there's a lot of information about this new product, Finity. You can get a lot of it in the financial. That's where they put a bunch of information. So do some more due diligence. I like the stock. I think she has a chance of running in the next few days. And when news comes out that they've actually got their upgrade for their fi financial filings, the 10s accepted, that's going to be great news. If they close the deal, if they get the product out there, they have lots of catalysts that could come out. But right now, she looks like she's setting up just for a continuation. I like her. But do some more due diligence. Don't just rely on what I show you. I may be wrong. I may have missed something. You may not be into this stock. Just because I'm excited doesn't mean you will be. So do your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.